Hey guys, Xflight here. Um, so, I didn't think that I was going to get such an awesome response about my 200QX video uh, that I did. And, you know, I just make videos for fun, um, kind of make them about the stuff that you want to hear. You know, the stuff that, yeah, it's going to exist, but it really has nothing to do with you. Um, so, what I've done today is I've actually set my camera up on a couple of boxes. I'm going to actually work on getting a tripod. So I'm going to pick it up every now and then, sorry for the shakiness, uh, but we're working that out. But since I did have such great response from the drone community about the 200QX and the answers that I gave and people sharing the video and liking it and commenting on it, it's fantastic guys. I love to respond to everybody's comments. Um, so what I've decided to go ahead and do is I'm going to do a video in regards to my DJI Hexacopter flame wheel. Okay. So, this is a very popular hexacopter. Um, if, if you have not had a quadcopter that you can do forward flight on, I 100% recommend you not buy a hexacopter. Okay? Simply because being able to understand the orientation of a hexacopter without previous experience is going to get somebody hurt. Okay? Um, it's very difficult to forward flight you know until you get used to it um, so I would really suggest that you guys not get this as your first first drone okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a comparison size so you guys can see how big this thing is to the 200 QX okay so that's the 200 QX right there right so it is a very large uh, helicopter now, this helicopter by itself is, is quite interesting simply because, yes, it is a hexacopter, so you're getting the six blades um, and everything like that. But the idea behind the hexacopter octocopter technology has just really started to blossom and has come out in the last couple of years. Yeah, they, they've existed, but it really hasn't been quite as perfected. Um, and I still feel that we're touching the waters with our capabilities with the NASA unit that I'm going to be explaining here in just a second. So I did purchase this hexacopter kit from Atlanta Hobby. Okay, it was $399. It did include everything that it needed to fly except for a battery. Um, also, it did not include the battery lead, which you see here. Um, and it also does not include a receiver. So you do have to have all of those things to be able to fly this, as well as a controller. You know, that's a given. Most things aren't going to come with a controller now if you're into this part of the hobby. Okay. Now, the idea behind the hexacopter, like I said, is... Being able to perfectly balance it, yes, is extremely stable. And at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and show some footage that we took with it. And on that footage, I do not have a jelly mount. I'm directly mounted the GoPro that I'm using to make this video to the bottom with a curve mount. Okay, it is directly mounted to that. So there's there's no give, and you'll see exactly how stable that video is, and that is thanks to our flight controller. Now the heck. I'm sorry, the hexacopter is put together, um, and in that video, you guys are going to see that you can see the landing gear. Um, that's part of where my trial and error is coming into play. So if you'll notice, you've got the two red arms right here. That's going to be your front, which I thought was quite odd that you might want them to be the back, but no, they're your front, or you can make it your back if you want to. It doesn't really matter, but... Um, but when I took the video, you can see the two front landing gear right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the landing gear to be uh, opposite so I'm getting this view um, the wider view and hopefully that can get rid of that uh, that landing gear footage now these are using phantom props not, I'm not sure of the pitch probably an 8 uh, on the pitch of the blades I think they're a 10 by 8 um, it did come with 8 props so you get 2 extra they are counterclockwise and clockwise now Let's say, for example, that you're building this. I'm not going to go through a build video, but I'm just going to tell you some tr struggles that I ran into. Um, when I first tried to take it off the ground, it was originally leaning. And I thought, you know, did I not mount my NASA unit right? What did I not do? Okay. Um, but if you'll notice on these motors, if you can see right there are little arrows. 
Now, you would think, now this is a directional motor. You'll notice that each, okay, and they go back and forth all the way around, so they're counter-rotating. So if this motor is meant to go that direction, then it should always go that direction. Because on the ESC, right there, there's just three ports, okay? There's nothing telling you which one plugs in where. Which, you know, if you have that problem, all you do is just reverse two wires, which is fine. But I didn't think, I thought, hey, you know, these speed controllers are only going to go one direction. The motors have arrows on them. They're only going to go one direction. So I didn't, I, I didn't go through that thought process because it just seemed that that's what was going to happen. So please make sure you check the rotation of your prop before you try and lift it off the ground because it, if you missed one wire it's going to lean it's going to screw it up just slowly throttle it up if you want to put a piece of tape on it like everybody does that's fine if you just want to start the engines and then slow it down and then watch them as they as they tend to stop figure out which direction they're going much better now maybe wondering what this little guy right here is that is my communication with alien life forms okay well that's what everybody likes to think uh, no, actually that's my compass GPS. So you'll notice that on the top here, um, you would think that the wire was going to go in the back, but no, once again, um, they, they've surprised us, okay? You'll notice there's a little arrow. That arrow needs to be as straight as possible. Now, this is Nozzle Light. It came with it, which it's, it's just as good as Nozzle V2. You know, I don't... I don't understand really the difference, except if you want to put a gimbal on it, that's fine. But if you think you're using a six-channel receiver, you only have four channels. So why don't you just use aux one and use your flap switch like you were on an airplane? And there you go. You have a release. You have a gimbal. Whatever you want to do with your camera. I mean, it I don't know. Don't spend the extra money to get Nasa V2, please. It's a waste of money. If you're if you're wanting to add like four or five gimbals, okay, probably, but. Let's be realistic, okay? Now, um, I'm trying to remember where I was at. So, like I said, make sure that these props are going in the same direction, or the correct direction, shall I say. Uh, on the, Make sure when you open or your box, you don't cut open every motor first, because there's actually a sticker on each one that is going to tell you if it's counterclockwise against CCW or clockwise for CW. But I later found out that these arrows are on there. So this does have a lot of capabilities that I'm not aware of. Okay, I don't know all of the capabilities of it. I had a Phantom, um, Phantom V2, Phantom Vision. Yeah, that was it. Um, I got rid of it. I wasn't a big fan of the Phantom. It was a lot of programming. It was a lot of stuff in the computer. Now this one, you still have to go through the same NASA system and the stuff that you can download off of DJI's website. You have to take your controller and you have to, you know, go to the full throw and everything like that. Now, that once we got that, it was very easy. It was very similar because you had to think that both the Phantom and this are using NASA M. So when to start your props, you want to bring both sticks to the center bottom, okay, um, and they'll start right up. Now keep in mind that when you leave this one at down throttle with this NASA unit at down throttle for three seconds, the props cut off. Now you think, what if I forget about that and I'm descending in the air and it's going to cut off? No, because it's the same way regardless of your controller. At half throttle, it hovers. At full throttle, or you know, above half throttle, it's going to ascend. And below half throttle, it's going to descend. So you will actually, when you fly it, you'll realize it that you're never going to be at full down throttle. Um, because quite frankly, it'd be descending and you kill yourself because it's going to go so fast. So don't worry about that. I was kind of concerned about that at, at first. I was like, oh, I'm going to crash it. But no, I have not, thankfully. Now, I went ahead and I don't know if you guys can see it in there because I'm not going to take it out. But there is a spectrum receiver, okay? So I'm using a spectrum receiver as well as I'm using uh, the NASA unit that, like I said, was supplied, which is right, right there. So you can see the NASA unit. Uh, and then it's like so it's got all these different modes like return to home and all of that I haven't messed with any of that so if you guys have any experience with that please comment because I would like to know 
in the systems how you guys are setting that up um, and what the different lights mean. I usually get three blinking lights and an or three red lights and an orange, I think, or vice versa. But that's if you have one of these already. Uh, on a side note, <laughs> it came with this Velcro and this sticker stuff, um, which are like the world's strongest adhesives. And if they went into the glue business, they would be making a fortune um, because I don't think I can get that off. I'd have to catch it on fire. That's what it would probably take, to be honest with you. Um, and also on a side note, I took some Velcro and I put it right here on the speed controllers. Uh, and then later I found a pack of zip ties. I went around and just zip tied them on. Uh, be careful not to cut yourself on your hand because they're real sharp little points and everything. But um, something also that's very interesting for you electricians out there, that this entire bottom board is, or the entire bottom piece is the power distribution board. So the, it actually lives, its body sends power through its body. So it's fantastic if you think about it. But anyway, you can see the little nodes on there. They're, you, they're black, but they do. You actually have to solder directly to the frame. And you can see right there where I'm soldered in. Um, also, they're all got these little minus and plus signs. So you know which ones are positive and negative leads. And also, there's a fourth one which you're going to solder, I'm sorry, not a fourth one, a seventh one that you're going to solder on your power board, okay, or your power supply. Now, to be honest with you, I don't look at recommendations for batteries and power supplies because uh, I really don't care. I'm going to fly with what I want to fly with anyway. You guys can send hate mail for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are speed controls? What does 30 amp mean? Put a 6 cell on it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and fly with... Um, I've been flying it with a 4S 3200 from E-Flight. This is about a $75 battery. You can get them cheaper other places. I got mine at Hobby Town. Um, but realistically, the one that I put it on more than anything is I put a 4000 E-Flight, this exact same battery, but a 4000 milliamp 30C. Um, I haven't seen a difference in the power, but the flight time is significantly more. Um, but this one is not meant to be agile. It's meant to be a flying canvas for your photography. Um, but that's my two cents on this helicopter, guys. I mean, it's uh, to the best of my knowledge. I think it's a fantastic hexacopter. Um, I do enjoy it very much so, and going to continue to fly it. I'll post some videos at the end, so hang around. Uh, please subscribe, rate, comment, share the videos, guys. I'm just getting started off. Thank you to whoever said my videos were shaky. I didn't really notice it, but I'm trying to hold the camera steadier. But I'm going to be getting a tripod uh, before it's over with. So. We're going to be doing a lot more videos. Thanks for everyone, you guys. You guys are awesome.